Hey, how you guys doing? I have started a video and then my husband calls me and my video gets interrupted. And I'm laughing because I specifically said to this man, while well, I had my great niece say to him when he called, that I was in the middle of something. What well, was the exercise class earlier? But I was in the middle of something. So I'm thinking, you know, I'll call you when I'm available. But he calls me when I'm still busy. Anywho. <laughs> Yeah, I'm touched. So anyway, um, what I believe I said in the original um, thing, I am glad to be back because we have taken a little break. Not that I wanted to take a little break, but our read through Steps to Christ. And so what it is, we're not reading through it. Well, I'm reading through it. But now I'm not taking you on that reading journey. I'm just going to share with you what I highlighted. So the current section that we're up to is called The Test of Discipleship. The test of discipleship. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Praise the Lord. And so it is just such a wonderful thing because who you see in front of you is the new creature in process, actually. The new creature in process. Old Corel, for the most part, has been, has passed away, right? And so I am evolving into this, this newer version, this Christ-focused version. And so that's what a disciple is, like, right? Follower of Christ. And not just following Christ, but you're also supposed to, you know, fish for other men. Hence this YouTube channel and things like that. And just, you know, teaching people about um, the character of Christ. The next section I highlighted, it says, like the wind, which is invisible, um, yet the effects of which are plainly seen and felt is a spirit of God and its work upon the human heart. That regenerating power, which no human eye can see, begets a new life in the soul. It creates a new being in the image of God. While the work of the spirit is silent and imperceptible, it effect, its effects are manifest. If the heart has become has been renewed by the Spirit of God, the life will bear witness to the fact. Excuse me one second. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat is still dry from working out, and I left my water bottle all the way over there. So hopefully I don't have to cough again. But if I do, I'm gonna have to get up and go get the water. So um we don't see the wind blowing, but we know that it's blowing because we feel it. Or we'll see the branches. Like right now, I'm looking outside my um, the living room window. You'll see the leaves on the tree moving. Well, not, this is a, what is this, like a pine pine tree or something. So that's why there's still leaves on it. Um, <clears throat> so you see that blowing. Um, and it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. As he convicts us and encourages us and all that beautiful thing. And as we become obedient, then we move and, and so forth. And we come this, become this new creature. The next section was, <clears throat> it says, who has the heart? So it's asking, you know, us. Who has our heart, right? With whom are our thoughts? Of whom do we love to converse? Who has our warmest affections and our best energies? If we are Christ, our thoughts are with him. And our sweetest thoughts are of him. All we have and are is consecrated to him. We long to bear his image, breathe his spirit, do his will, and please him in all things. Those who become new creatures in Christ Jesus will bring forth the fruit fruits, excuse me, of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And the fruits of the spirit is taken from um, Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. So these questions, questions are such a beautiful thing. And so as we're asking those questions, as those questions were read, like, you know, it's good to stop and pause and, and Think about the answer, because if we are Christians or we have a desire to become Christians, we have to look at these kind of things. Who has our hearts? 
Is it Christ? Like, who do we think about? When we do things, do we have Christ in mind? And, and those kind of things. And then um, that talks about the fruits of the Spirit, like love. A lot of people say love. I love you. I love you. I love this. I love that. But do we really? You know? Um, love is just not a, oh, I'm in love. And then if you do something to me, I don't love you anymore. Or, you know, I want to do, I love this profession or whatever. But because, you know... This person is making my job so difficult. I'm really talking about something, but anyway. Um, <laughs> does that mean I stopped loving my profession? No. You know, when you love something or someone, no matter the obstacles that come in the way, it doesn't stop you from loving that person or that thing. You're going to push forward. Um, and we do that. How? Christ. Christ is the answer for all of our issues, every single one of our issues. Um, and the other fruit, it talks about joy, happiness. Beyond happiness is joy, because in spite of, you know, can still find joy in Jesus. And peace, oh, all of this is just the character of God. You know, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And it's God's that's who God is. And as Christians, that's, that's the direction that we, we need to go. The next one, it says, there is no evidence of genuine repentance unless it works reformation. If he restores the pledge, give again that he had robbed, confess his sins, and love God and his fellow men, the sinner may be sure that he has passed from death unto life. So as we are sinful and we were doing things the way we wanted to do it, right? And then we met, we met Christ and we saw, yo, this is not the way to be. And I want to change. And, you know, it, that process starts. We have to repent. We have to acknowledge our sin and choose to do different and go a different way. And so if I stole something from you, I need to give it back because now I know stealing is wrong. Right. If I lied to you, I need to confess. Listen, I lied to you because now I know lying is wrong and I want to live this new life and I can't live it without acknowledging what I did before and so forth. Because that's when that peace comes in. I'm just seeing my hair. I have to do it over. Um, I'm trying to let it grow back out. I'm not losing focus. I just like to be real. And this is this is me. Um, yeah, I want to grow it back out. I usually cut it all the way down because it's just easier. Um, but I'm going to grow it out a little bit, not too much. Um, so excuse my hair if it bothers you. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> the next section, it says, When, as erring, sinful beings, we come to Christ and become partakers of his pardoning grace, love springs up in the heart. Every burden is light, for the yoke that Christ is, imposes is easy. Duty becomes a delight. And sacrifice a pleasure. Wow. Um, the path that before seems shrouded in darkness becomes bright with beams from the sun of righteousness. And this is talking about God as well. Jesus Christ um, specifically. So having that newness in heart and mind, right? When we... <laughs> We have to go through our trials and tribulations or whatever. These burdens, they become lighter as we, I think there's a, not I think, I know there's a scripture which talks about cast, cast all your cares on God, right? And, and this, as I read that, this is what it reminded me of. Because we are going to be bothered by life here. The devil is busy. And God allows what he allows for a reason. Bottom line is he wants us all saved. He wants no one to die, no one to perish. He wants everyone to live for eternity. And so if we're not listening to the Holy Spirit, sometimes he has to step out the way. And you know, this is what you want to do. I, I'm trying to, to protect you from that, but this, this is what you want. You know, that's the burden that you want to carry. I'm going to let you do do what you do you know he steps out the way and then there's those of us who um I mean I'm in that camp at times 
you know, um, hoping, praying, <laughs> need to change that. And then there's those um, times where it's, yeah, you're following Christ, you're keeping busy doing his work, you're loving it, all of this stuff, and the devil is just, he's like, oh, you want to follow Christ? Okay. And God allows that part to strengthen us, to prepare us, because in strengthening us to go through that situation, we're a testimony because we're praising and joyful in spite of all the craziness we're going through. And so someone out there who doesn't know Christ, like, oh, how is this person able to deal with this? And they're like, wow, this Christ is making that person strong. I need to find out about this Christ. And so we just have to trust God in his word and keep it moving. Um, that is good. That's all I have to keep saying. Um, the next part, it says, if our hearts are renewed, in the likeness of God, if the divine love is implanted in the soul, will not the law of God be carried out in the life? Um, <clears throat> and the law of God, it's talking about the word of God in its entirety. And then kind of when we look at the ten, the ten Commandments, excuse me, I found in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, and before Exodus, what was the, No, it's Exodus 20. And then I know also, I think it's in Deuteronomy, but I forgot what chapter in Deuteronomy 2. Um, it um, talks about the Ten Commandments. But that, that law, God's law, and you know, we, we like to pick and choose which parts of it we're going to be obedient to. Um, but Jesus said not one jot, not one tittle, nothing from the law is going to be removed. Um, Jesus came to fulfill that law because humans... Um, we were trying to say, we can't do that. And Jesus in human flesh came and he did it. And simply he did it because he spent time in the scripture and he spent time with the father, God, the father. And so it's the same thing for us. That's how we're able to be obedient to God's law. And so the next section, it says obedience, the service and allegiance of love is a true sign of discipleship, right? So this section is called the test of discipleship. And here it goes. It says obedience, the service and allegiance of love is the true sign of discipleship. And it's simply talking about obedience to God's word, to God's law. If we go down a little bit, it says if we abide in Christ, if the love of God dwells in us, our feelings, our thoughts, our purposes, our actions, will be in harmony with the will of God as expressed in the precepts of his holy law. Abiding in Christ, knowing more about him, learning about him, and actually enjoying that. That's, that's the encouragement that's given here. And then the next part I have is a quote from the scripture. It says, hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked first john 2 verse 3 to 6 because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye you should follow his steps first peter 2 verse 21 so the first part because there was a lot of he says and he abides and he also himself and all that so what it was saying here if I'm saying, if Corel is saying that I abide in Christ, right? That means Corel is supposed to walk as Jesus walked. So the things that Jesus did while he was on the earth, that's what Corel is supposed to be doing. The way Jesus went about doing good, helping out this person, providing a word of encouragement. Um, listen, sometimes being persecuted and you know, attacked and being silent. That's how Jesus walked and that's how we're called to walk. The next part down here, it says, Christ has made a way of escape for us. He lived on earth amid trials and temptations such as we have to meet. He lived a sinless life. He died for us and now he offers to take our sins and give us his righteousness. If you give yourself to him and accept him as your savior, then 
sinful as your life may have been, for his sake you are accounted righteous. Praise God. Christ's character stands in place of your character, and you are accepted before God just as if you had not sinned. And that's the beautiful thing of justification by faith. Because faith is believing what we can't see, right? So we can't see Jesus anymore. We can't have that face-to-face -face interaction. But we believe based off of the scriptures, right? And because we believe, and in the Bible it tells us that Jesus came to die for our sins, right? And when we accept that free gift, because we don't have to do anything, the only thing that we have to do, let me, the only thing that we have to do is accept the gift by faith that Jesus came and died for my sins. And because now I've accepted that, and when it gets to the process of baptism and becoming this new creature and all of this stuff, I can now be seen as righteous in the sight of God. Not because of Corel, but because of what Jesus did on my behalf. And just because I am now saved and righteous, it doesn't mean then I can start doing X, Y, Z. I could start going back to lying. I could start going back to stealing. Or I could start doing this and start, no. We die daily. I think Paul said it. Um, I don't remember which part in the New Testament. It's a daily, and not even just a daily, it's a moment by moment, because we make decisions all the time. So in dying and becoming this new creature, each decision that we make, we have to stop and think, hmm, is this what Christ would have me do? I can't do it based off of Corel, because if I do things based off of Corel, have mercy. So I have to do it based off of Christ. Um... And so that that's what it is. And I mean, if you have any questions about anything, please comment. Let's let's talk. Ask questions. Um, let's get the dialogue going. Almost done. So now it says here, there are those who have known the pardoning love of Christ and who really desire to be children of God. Yet they realize that their character is imperfect, their life faulty, and they are ready to doubt whether their hearts have been renewed by the Holy Spirit. To such, I would say, do not draw back in despair. We shall often have to bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus because of our shortcomings and mistakes, but we are not to be discouraged. And that's a powerful encouragement right there because oftentimes we fall short. And you know, we're, for the Christian, we're, 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 Going along and, you know, we'll have those moments where things are going so great and then, you know, something happens. It could be something huge as we see it or something small. And then we we get discouraged and think we can't do it and, oh, God doesn't love us and, you know, who am I? I can't call myself a Christian. No, let's not be discouraged. We got to get up and keep pressing. Um, there's a part in the Bible that talks about um, falling and I think it said something like the righteous man falleth, but he knows how to get up and he'll keep getting up. I think it even mentioned 70 times, but I could be mixing that up with something else. But that's what it's about. We don't, we're not supposed to plan to fail, not supposed to plan to sin and so forth. But if we do, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, right? In the heavenly sanctuary, because a sanctuary on earth and the Bible talks about this. The sanctuary on earth is a copy of the sanctuary in heaven. And so we have Jesus in the sanctuary in heaven advocating for us, right? And in this process, when we fall, hopefully we're not continuing to commit the same sin over and over. But we are planning through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, through God's strength to keep pressing forward and learn from our mistakes and do the work that we need to do. And uh, look at this, the next thing highlighted, pray more fervently, believe more fully. That's powerful. Prayer is such a powerful thing. Prayer and Bible study, amen. So we need to pray more and pray, not these little fluffy, 
let's pray. Like, let's be real with our prayer when we're talking. Like, especially like when we're by ourselves, man, we got to really talk to God. We really have to pray this situation out. We have to get serious. There's a lot of things going on in the world, you know. Um, let's definitely keep, all over the world, there's things going on. Um, recently now, it's like um, this thing with Texas and, you know, Texas is usually a very hot place and here it was, they had this, I don't even know if it was snow or ice or what have you. I'm terrible with keeping up with the news. Um, but I know that there was like a crash, like a hundred car pileup because, you know, the roads are slippery and all of that stuff. And they're not used to all of that down there. And um, in addition to that, sorry, my battery is low. Um, and people died. You know, and then there was an issue with the power grid, the, the electricity, and people were without power, without heat, without water. <sighs> I, and then one of the um, public figures down there, the mayor, forgot which area in Texas, made some crazy comments about people got to fend for themselves and know how to survive. And... Like, what kind of craziness? But, you know, as I'm saying it just now, I just realized that this is part in the Bible that talks about people's hearts will become so wicked. And that was wicked for that man to say. Like, how dare you? More than likely, he still had his power and what have you, and he wasn't feeling the pain of the other people. But how dare you, as a public figure, to think in that manner and not care about those who voted for you? You know, those that you... Man, Lord... We got to pray for people because his mind has to be so wrapped up with nonsense for him to even think that way and then have the nerve to type that and post it. There's a lot going on. Jesus is offering us peace in spite of, right? So let's, let's keep praying and let's believe the word of God. I'm about to just read the rest of what I have highlighted here. It says, the closer you come to Jesus the more faulty you will appear in your own eyes for your vision will be clearer and your imperfections will be seen in broad and distinct contrast to his perfect nature. No deep seated love for Jesus can dwell in the heart that does not realize its own sinfulness. If we do not see our own moral deformi deformity, it is unmistakable evidence that we have not had a view of the beauty and excellence of Christ. So when we don't see our own nonsense, when we always are looking that way and saying it's that person's fault, why this is that person's fault, or this person did that, but we're not looking here and be like, yo, Corel got issues. This is how Corel played a part in this issue. This is... We can't keep pointing out there and we're not looking, right? We're pointing. But these three fingers here, right? It's pointing this way. But we're going to ignore these three and focus on the finger there. I'm going to point out there. And I'm just seeing like the thumb is up. And I'm thinking, up, oh, Jesus. <laughs> we're leaving Jesus out. We're pointing out there. We're not looking at ourselves and we're forgetting about Jesus. Have mercy. Oh, Lord, help us. We got to get it together, people. Playtime is long over. There's so much going on in the world. We have to get it together. Let's get focused. Let's learn more about God and his word. Come on. There's some people that know. They don't know about the peace and the joy and the love that is in store in following Christ. And I, I thank God so much. There's so much blessings and so much conviction. Like I love when God points out my errors. I love it in the sense that now I know, okay, this is an issue. This is what I got to pray for. And this is how we're going to move forward. And then the last highlight before I finish up, it says, the more our sense of need drives us to him and to the word of God, the more exalted views we shall have of his character and the more fully we shall reflect his image. And that's what it boils down to, reflecting the image of Christ because that's why we were created.
God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit says, let us make man in our image. The character of Christ. Let's get it together. Let's get it together, people. All right, I think I'm going to put a link to um, Little Light Studios. I just watched one of their things. It probably was on um, their LED um, live. It probably came out maybe two or three weeks ago. I just watched it last week, though, I think. Um, it's talking about the character of Christ. It was a really good um, informational. So I'm going to put, I hope I remember to actually copy and put the link in this one I posted. And I hope you guys watch it. It is. Um, it was such a blessing. Um, love you all. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I just before I end, I just want to share a prayer, um, just for those who are experiencing things in in Texas. It's really been on my mind um, down there. My bell is ringing, so I apologize for that. Get the bell, please. Most gracious and loving Father, we thank you so much for who you are and all that you do. I pray that you will help us to know more about you, dear Lord. I pray that you will convict us of your truth, dear Lord. I pray that you will help us to take time to open up your word. Help us to pray, dear Lord. Help us to be about your business. I pray in a marked and special way that you will be with those in Texas, dear Lord, who are experiencing things that they are not used to. I pray that you will keep them, dear Lord. And for each and every one of us, I pray that we will... Hear as your Holy Spirit speaks to our minds and our hearts and help us to look at ourselves, dear Lord. Help us to stop pointing the finger at the other person, but to really look at ourselves because Jesus is coming back soon. And if we're not ready, if we're not prepared, all of this would have been for what? Once again, thank you for the opportunity to even have this platform. It won't be around for much longer because the devil has been busy and he's shutting down things like this. But I pray that your will be done. Thank you so much for all that you have done. Continue to be with my family, my friends, everyone I've ever come in contact with, and those who are going to take the time to listen and to watch this. Guide us and bless us and keep us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thank you so much. Take care. And until next time, bye-bye.